elements that we've learned up to this point are assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Assets are the things that we own or owe. If you answered own, that is correct. Assets will be the things that you can tangibly hold on to and say, yes, this is something that I've owned, I bought this, and now I'll be able to use it in the future. Liabilities are the things that we owe. And our owner's equity will be basically what's able to be used by the owner. A major account under owner's equity is going to be our capital account. Normally our capital account in the sole proprietorship is prefaced with the name of the sole proprietor, which in this instance, and I'm going to abbreviate, is just going to be Jessica Jane because we will continue through our saga of Jessica Jane and her delivery service as we progress through Chapter 2. We are going to expand our accounting equation in this particular section to include three more elements. And all of these elements will all be in the same area of owner's equity. So as I look here under owner's equity, I have my one major account so far at this point. And I'm going to draw a terrible, I'm sure, umbrella. But at this point, so we'll see how I work it. There we go. That kind of looks like an umbrella. Under this owner's equity umbrella, we will find several bits and pieces. Of course, we're in business to make money. And the money that we make in our business, we will call revenue. This isn't revenue that's money made, maybe from our, our CD that's drawing interest at the bank, or maybe we have uh, an extra room in the back that we're renting out to someone to store their uh, lawnmower equipment in. That's not the kind of income that we're speaking of. This revenue is the actual reason that you are in business. It is going to be the, the money that you receive from the goods or service that you're providing. Now, of course, that revenue is going to only add to the owner's equity in your company. So that is going to always increase your owner's equity. The second element that I do want to talk to you about today is going to be called expenses. Of course, you can't do business without spending a little bit of money on the side, can you? So expenses will also be under this umbrella. But expenses are quite the opposite from revenue, aren't they? Because expenses actually will decrease what the owner has in the business. So these are going to be subtracted from. Now, of course, if your revenues are greater than your expenses, that's going to be a good thing. That means you had a net income. But if your expenses are greater than your revenue for a given period, then of course that's not so good, is it? Because that is a net loss for the period. And you really don't want to be in business to lose money. The third element that we'll be talking about today, drawals, also termed drawing account. And by the way, that doesn't mean drawing like a pen and paper. Instead, this is going to be called a drawing account in that it's going to be money that this owner has taken out for personal use. If the owner, Jessica Jane, decides that she's going to um, buy her cousin a birthday present and she needs to take money out of the company in order to do that, she can't just write a check out of the company checking account for this birthday present. Instead, she writes a check to herself, says that it is used for personal business regardless of what she does with it. So cash would decrease and her drawing then at that point would increase and that would be actually a decrease in how much that she has in the business. It would be just like an expense. Why can't we just say that's an expense? Well, the reason that you can't call it as an expense is because it's personal in nature. And anytime you're an owner of a company and you use company funds and you don't remove them from the company before you use them for personal business, you can get in trouble legally, can't you? because you always want to keep business and personal things separate. The two shall never meet, so to speak. We're going to analyze these transactions along in your textbook. The first transaction is letter E, the delivery of revenues that's earned in cash. Remember, Jessie Jane is in the delivery service. She goes out, she's delivered some packages, et cetera, et cetera, and everybody has paid her in cash money. So we'll have to go back and ask ourselves the question, what happened here? Well, did your cash go up? Yes, I think so, because Jessie just made a little bit more money. 
right? She delivered a few packages. Well, if she delivered a few packages, made revenue from those packages, that means that her cash went up and her revenue went up as well. Let's see the exact example. Jessie receives $500 in cash from clients for delivery services. What do we do? Which accounts are affected? Number one is cash. Cash is an asset. It's something that we own. This is under my big umbrella of assets. What just happened here? Did cash increase or decrease? Did it go up or did it go down? It went up. And it went up by $500. Well, you know, here's my equal sign, that whatever happens on the left side of the equal sign is going to have to be one of two things. I'll have to do just the opposite, also on the left side of the equals, or I'm going to have to do the same thing on the right-hand side of the equal. Otherwise, my algebra teacher is going to be pretty upset with me, right? So if I added $500 in cash to this side, what's my second account that's going to be affected by this transaction? Remember, we're double-entry accounting. You never write down a figure just once. You always have it at least twice. So, cash went up. She made deliveries, so delivery is a revenue. That's what she's in business to do. So my revenue at that point, and I'm going to call this particular account, how about delivery fees? And it went up $500 too. Yay. Delivery fees is the name of an account that is under the umbrella of revenue. Just like cash is the name of the account that is under the, the element of assets. So I have 500 on this side of the equal sign, plus 500 over on this side. Am I in balance? Yes. Let's move to the next one. Transaction F, I pay rent for the month. Jessie is renting a small office on campus, and she's paying $200 for her rent for the month of June. What are my three questions? The first one is, what happened here? It's an expense for doing business, right? So now we'll ask ourselves the second question, and that's going to be, what accounts are affected here? If she wrote a check, that means cash is affected. And is cash affected up or down? Down. That's correct. She wrote a check. Anytime you write a check, cash is going down. So let's start it right over here on this side. Under cash, under assets then, her cash went down by $200. Double entry accounting. So what's the second half of this? transaction. If her cash went down, what else happened? My expenses. That's exactly right. So the name of that account under it, expenses is going to be called rent expense. On rent expense, what happened? $200, right? Now I owe $200 more in expenses. And by the way, what do expenses do to my owner's equity? Do they increase my owner's equity or do they decrease my owner's equity? If you answer decrease, you are correct. You see these little brackets? By the way, brackets are what you always want to use when you are having to subtract something in accounting. And the reason I subtracted 200 on the right side because expenses are subtracted from owner's equity. Do you understand? Yes, I'm going to add it up under the rent expense account itself, but it's actually going to be subtracted from here, from the owner's equity, because Expenses will decrease my owner's equity. Transaction letter G. Paid your telephone bill. It says Jessie pays $50 for her telephone service for this particular month. Just like the transaction that just happened where she had to pay rent, we're going to ask ourselves the same thing. What happened? Jessie pulled out the checkbook. She writes a check for $50. That's an expense, isn't it? She wrote the check to the telephone company for a telephone expense. The only reason she has this expense, by the way, is because it's a business for a phone for her business. This is not a cell phone that's her personal cell phone. Remember, personal and business never, never meet in the middle. Okay, what two accounts are affected here? Cash. Yes, that's correct. Did cash go up or did cash go down? Cash went down by $50, so I'm going to subtract. $50 from my cash asset. What's the second half of this particular transaction? Well, I think we have another expense account, don't you? So I'm going to have another account called phone expense here. And how much did I pay? $50. 
So my phone expense went up. Yes, that's true. But what do expenses do from my capital? Expenses are going to be subtracted from my capital. They're going to be decreasing my owner's equity. So in actuality then, I subtracted $50 from the left side of my equal sign. I subtracted $50 from the right side of my equal sign. So am I still in balance? And the answer is yes. After every single transaction that you do, you always want to look across and make sure that the left side of that equal sign still equals the right side of that equal sign when you tallied them all up and going across. Okay, transaction letter H says, the delivery revenues that were owned on account. Now, what does that mean, on account? We've been talking about accounts, like we have the name of an account called cash, we have a name of an account called delivery fees, rent expense, but what does this mean when she has delivered stuff and earned the money on account? Well, basically, that means she has taken on the burden of extending credit to some of her customers. It's not credit in the form of the American Express and the Visa and the MasterCard and that type of stuff. Instead, it's like, oh, maybe it's kind of like Wimpy on Popeye. Has anybody ever watched Popeye before? Where he says, I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. At that particular point, Wimpy was buying the hamburger on credit or on account because they were at that point then having to keep track in an account ledger, Wimpy owes one burger, Wimpy owes another burger, Wimpy has money, that he's paid off these burgers, yay! Oh, Wimpy's bought another burger on account. Well, in this particular instance, Jessie is extending credit to some of her regular customers. Maybe Dr. So-and-so gets packages on a regular basis, and he says, Jessie, instead of me giving you this cash money every time you come in to deliver these packages, why don't you just send me a bill at the end of the month and I will pay it all at that particular point in time. That's okay. But at this point, Jessie's trying to produce some goodwill for her new business and she's going to extend credit to some of her regular customers. On the books, Jessie will always recognize the revenue that you earn at the time that you perform that actual service regardless of if you were paid for it or not. So Jessie may have delivered the package, whatever that date is that she delivers the package, that's when her revenue account goes up. You don't wait until she's paid for it in two months time and then allow it to go up. The revenue is that at that particular point in time is going to be increased, okay? So as I look at this particular one and I say, what happened? And I know my two accounts, there's always going to be at least two accounts affected in every transaction. Well, the first one means revenue is going up, right? So how much revenue did she allow to be uh, delivered on account? I believe it's $600. Which means then that she has to recognize that she earned $600 in revenue at that point. But I can't say that her cash went up, can I? Earlier, when we earned revenue, remember, her delivery fees went up $500 and her cash went up $500. But I had no cash at this point. So what will I say at this one? Well, I'm going to make me a new account under assets. And this new account is going to be called accounts receivable. Okay? And accounts receivable basically means just that, that I, as the owner of this business, am going to be receiving this money. Lending institutions, all of the general accepted accounting principles allows you to count the money that you will be receiving from customers as an asset, as something that you own already. Even though you don't have money at that particular point in time, you have a really good chance of getting that money, otherwise you should not have extended the credit. So at that particular point, Jesse's going to say, I will be receiving this money from those regular customers, and it's going to be considered as an asset. So, yes, her delivery fees went up by $600, and her accounts receivable will go up by $600. I have $600 that went up on the left side of this accounting equation, the left side of the equal sign, and I also have $600 that went up on the right-hand side of my accounting equation.